Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, the podcast, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, before I get into Roy Jones over Courtney Fry, let me briefly just respond to uh, the uh, feedback I've gotten on my video, post-fight video, on Janady Golovkin versus Daniel Gill. You know, it's very hard, as you can imagine, to get 10 negatives, 10 thumbs down on a video. Somehow, right now, less than, oh, let's say, in fact, about 12 hours in, I already have 61 thumbs down on that earlier video. It's all good. That's the way the system works. When you disagree with me, I want to hear about it, right? Let's talk about it. The purpose here of um, this YouTube channel is really to discuss boxing. It's not to agree with me or any point of view. But let me just say this. People have asked me, what would it take for you to be impressed by Janady Golovkin? Look, he does a lot of things impressively. This isn't the first fight I've talked about Janady Golovkin on, right? Just do a simple background search on my takes on Janady Golovkin. You're going to find a lot of positives. But think of it like you would think of watching a baseball pitcher. Right? If you know that baseball pitcher throws a great fastball, and if all he does is throw fastballs, right? let's say he strikes out a batter with just fastballs, you still don't know what will happen if he's forced to throw a curve, a slider, a screwball, a changeup. Right? My point to you is simply that Janady Golovkin is playing the same three notes, right? And there are holes in his game. Now, I've read through many of the comments here. People are dismissing the punch landed by Giel right before Giel gets taken out, right? Many people are saying, hey, Golovkin knew he could take Giel's punch, right? Golovkin decided to take Giel's punch so he could land his own punch, right, to end the fight. He got the better of that transaction. <laughs> Let me just point out, in the third round, when you give Daniel Giel time to literally time the counter and wind up to throw the punch, and I encourage you to look at that sequence, just look at it repeatedly in slow motion. There is no way that any fighter could know with any confidence whatsoever that they would get the better of that exchange, right? Daniel Giel has a free shot on Janady Golovkin. It is a free shot. Golovkin doesn't have a hand up. He has nowhere to tuck his head. Now, as it was, right, Giel doesn't quite get him square. He gets him hard, but he doesn't quite get him square, right? So Golovkin is able to follow through with his own right hand. That ends the fight, right? If that's the Golovkin strategy, if Golovkin's strategy is to allow opponents to get free shots on him, right? Nowhere to hide his head. No hand up. Dare I say, I don't think I've ever, ever seen Floyd Mayweather that unprotected. Ever. Right? If Golovkin's strategy is to completely expose himself in the hopes of trading home run shots, then he's not an A-level fighter. Let's be real here. Also, understand, this is nothing new in boxing, right? Boxing is replete with people like young Mike Tyson. You see the guy, he's destroying everyone. Young George Foreman. You see the guy, he's destroying everyone, right? Guess what happens 
later in a guy's career as he stays on the world-class stage. A young Mike Tyson is going to sooner or later eventually run into a guy with a great jab and Buster Douglas, right? Older Mike Tyson is eventually going to run into a guy like Evander Holofield. Now think about Holofield's style. I've been here online saying that lateral movement and an ability to come inside on a guy like Golovkin who likes a little bit of space to throw his big punches. You know what I call guys like this, right? Mid-range hookers. He likes mid-range. Doesn't like you too close. Understand an Evander Holofield style would give him the same trouble it gave Mike Tyson. Right? That's the point I'm making. Right? Watching Golovkin right on his front foot land heavy punches is like watching a fastball pitcher throwing fastballs. Right? My point to you is at the world class level sooner or later he's gonna have to go to a plan B what is that plan B have we seen him on his back foot have we seen him try to win a fight on the scorecards folks these are highly relevant questions boxing's a complicated sport with a lot of talent you can't expect this guy to just front foot his way, front foot and hook his way through world-class competition. Now let me talk about Roy Jones and Courtney Fry. Let me just say, I wish I had something red here. In fact, I'm drinking a soda that has some red in it. I'm going to throw this soda as if I'm throwing a red flag. Right? The sport of boxing to me doesn't need fights like this. Right? Let me point out that this fight officially apparently was for the cruiserweight title of the World Boxing Union. Right? The German version. If you go to boxrec.com. Now how could this fight possibly have been for a world title when Jones's opponent, a guy named Courtney Fry, was coming off of consecutive losses. How does a guy merit a championship shot coming off consecutive losses? Let me also say this too. The guys who he lost to <laughs> weren't exactly, let's say, the elites at Cruiser. It's not like the guy lost to Johan Hernandez and then got the title shot. No, one of the two guys he lost to was a guy named Nathan King. Did you know that at the time of the fight, by the way, we're talking about recent fights Courtney Fry had, right? The fights immediately preceding this so-called title shot against Roy Jones. Did you know that other than a loss to Enzo Macarinelli, he lost to Nathan King, who was 13 and 22 going into the fight, who had lost his last four matches going into his fight against Courtney Fry. Right now, if I were to call Roy Jones a cherry picker here, that would be a disservice to cherry pickers. Right, this is absurd. Courtney Fry, a guy who just lost to a guy who's 13 and 22 in a world title fight? You know, I don't want to defame any organization. All I ask is that you reach your own conclusions about the World Boxing Union based on this information. Look up Courtney Fry's background. Let me also point out, too, that any organization can call themselves World Boxing whatever. Just understand that the World Boxing Union is not the IBF, WBC, WBA, right? It's not. WBO, it's not. This is a different organization. So when Roy Jones in interviews calls himself a cruiserweight champion, you should have a raised eyebrow. 
Let's talk about how Roy looked in the fight. Look, don't be fooled by Bernard Hopkins' success in his late 40s. Hopkins, by his own admission, is an alien, right? Hopkins is an outlier, right? For those of you who read Malcolm Gladwell, he's the exception to the rule. Hopkins is rare. There are very few guys in boxing history like Bernard Hopkins, right? You have to think in terms of Archie Moore or George Foreman, right? Very few guys who are legitimately world-class in their mid to late 40s, right? Roy Jones doesn't belong in that group. Now, look, I don't mean to sound like a hater, right? I know people think I hate Janady Golovkin. They think I hate Roy Jones. I don't. Jones, personally, is one of my favorite fighters ever, right? Ever, right? Jones, when he ruled the roost, had the most dominant run that I think I've ever seen. He was dominant. Wasn't technically where, let's say, a Ray Robinson or a Floyd Mayweather was or a Ray Leonard, but still had a dominant run where he beat some excellent fighters, James Toney, Mike McCallum, Virgil Hill, right? But Roy now is a shell of himself. Understand, in his prime, Roy relied on timing and his legs for defense. He was never the defensive master that, let's say, someone like Floyd Mayweather is. Right? Jones was never, but Jones was a freakish athlete. Let's just say, in my opinion, the timing's gone. Let's just say, in my opinion, the legs are gone. Right? Let me just say, power's the last to go. Roy Jones will always throw a great left hook. That's what he threw to end this fight. He'll always have the ability to get off a great left hook. But there's nothing else there. Let's say if I hear that Jones has signed to fight Johan Hernandez. Let's say he signs to fight Eddie Chambers. And longtime subscribers here know I bet against Chambers in a recent fight. And his opponent did win it. Right, but if Roy Jones signs to fight Eddie Chambers or Johan Hernandez or other guys, Steve Cunningham, other guys who can make cruiserweight, I'll be the bald man in line at the casino trying to place a bet on Roy Jones' opponent. Right, this fight wasn't a real championship level fight in my opinion. Right, if I sound like a hater, so be it. Don't confuse Roy Jones with Bernard Hopkins. Don't confuse Roy Jones with Guillermo Jones. Don't confuse Roy Jones with Antonio Tarver. Those guys have more gas left in their tanks, right, in their 40s, right, Vitaly Klitschko. Those guys have more gas left than our legitimate world-class fighters, even now late in their careers. I would argue that Roy Jones, apart from a great left hook, right, is fighting guys like Courtney Fry for a reason. I don't think Roy Jones can hang in the ring, in my opinion, against a legitimate contender. Let's be frank, right? Antonio Tarver years ago, when Jones was closer to his prime, beat Jones in two out of three fights. Right? I don't think there's any way Jones would come in the area code of being able to beat a Tarver today. Right? So, you know, consider me a skeptic on this one. To me, this Roy Jones World Boxing Union Cruiserweight title fight was a joke, right? Roy Jones, this is not the way to have titles in boxing. In my opinion, it diminishes real titles by having guys who are clearly past their prime just hanging on, claiming to have, you know, titles from organizations like the World Boxing Union, right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us 
at gamblersadvisory.com. Feel free to comment on Janady Golovkin. I understand. Given that my negatives here on my prior video are running two to one ahead of my positives, <laughs> right? I understand that most people disagree with me. But keep in mind, don't be blinded by the outcome in fights. You need to think about the journey that got you to the outcome, right? We all knew. I don't dispute that Janady Golovkin is one of the hardest punchers in boxing. I would argue, though, that boxing is the sweet science. That even guys with big punches have to come up with plan B's and plan C's. They need to have contingencies. Right here, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if Janady Golovkin can fight on his back foot. I'm not sure what Golovkin does when a guy smothers him. This is not the first fight I've seen Golovkin in where he's gotten hit with flush shots and he doesn't even look like he's rolling away from the punch, right? It wasn't a factor in this fight, but it could be a factor down the road, especially when we're talking about him possibly fighting guys like Miguel Cotto, right? If you're going to fight guys like that, you need a few tools in your toolbox, Right now, Golovkin has only really shown us one or two. Simply put, the jury is still out. This fight doesn't show us dominance. This fight shows us that Golovkin can throw a great fastball. I thought we knew that going in. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.